We're doing a walking tour of Pompeii. <laughs> We're walking. <laughs> we are walking. So 200 years ago or so, all of this was buried underground, lost to history. From part of the city. Remember that the archaeological area will close at the five, okay? Another information, the tickets that you have, it's only valid inside the archaeological area. I mean, if you go out at the end of the tour and you won't come back inside again, you have to buy another ticket. Please don't touch the walls, the frescoes, the paintings. Uh, if you want to take some pictures, uh, please don't use a flash inside the building. It's okay. Another information, the tip is not including to the price of the ticket here in Italy. It depends on your satisfaction at the end of the tour. That's the map of the archaeological area. Today, in a couple of hours, we see this part of the city. Where you see? Now, the city of Pompeii was built at the end of the 7th century before Christ by the Oscans. But you know that many other people lived here, the Etruscans, the Samnites, the Greeks, and the Romans. About the name, Pompeii comes from Pempo, which means a number five, because at the beginning of Pompeii was divided into five different villages. Pompeii was destroyed by the eruption of the volcano on 24th of October 79 AD, after Christ. And 62 AD, I mean 17 years before the eruption, here there was an earthquake that a lot of buildings and houses destroyed. But people did think about an eruption. Because they said that Vesuvio wasn't a volcano, but a big mountain. They grew a lot of agricultural products, like olive trees, fruit trees or cereals. And Pompeii wasn't covered by the lava. No lava here, but just the promises. There were big and light stones, rocks, lapilli, small stones, pyroclastic materials, ash and gas. So Pompeii was covered by 7 meters of ash, about 21 feet, and people died for suffocation because of ash and gas. The first excavation here was in 1748 by the King of Naples. You know, the excavations here lasted about three centuries, 300 years, because Pompeii was a big city. It had about 66 hectares, so 170 acres and 20,000 inhabitants. And about 13,000 inhabitants survived and 7,000 people died. During the eruption, a lot of the people were sleeping because the explosion started early in the morning. Other people were running, but they wanted to run toward the sea because the sea was close to the city Roman time. Imagine about one kilometer from here. But today you can find the sea about five kilometers from here because of the materials, you know, the ash, the rocks. So some people survived because they escaped toward the sea by boats. Pompeii had a big port. Some people died because they decided to remain in their houses. So they died in the first moment because of the collapse of the roofs and in the second moment they died for suffocation because of ash and gas. So now, ladies and gentlemen, look at in front of you. You see the original city walls. Now we are outside the walls and outside the city. Look at on the wall there, you see a dark lava rock. Why? I told you that Pompeii wasn't so covered by the lava. But you see the lava rock today because when Pompeii was built, I mean when it was founded at the end of the 7th century BC, it was built on the top of a lava rock of a previous eruption, probably of a prehistoric time. The last eruption of the volcano here was in 1944, but it was a small eruption. Today, you know, the volcano is still active, but it's sleeping, it's in a quiet phase. And on the top of the volcano, we have an observatory office that monitors every movement of the land. But we don't know when there will be another eruption. Probably before an eruption, there will be an earthquake, like 2,000 years ago. Not today, eh? <laughs> no, <laughs> but just in case, they know a secret way to escape, so follow your guide. Okay? <laughs> Name? Okay, andiamo. You know what means andiamo? Yes. Let's, go. Let's go. Wow, andiamo. Thank you. Now, the volcano, the Mount Vesuvius is just in front of us, and about uh, 10 kilometers far from here. 
In front of you there, there is the larger theater. It was a for tragedies and comedies. And over there to the right, we have also the entrance to the small theater. It was a for musical performances. Here you see a big space like a garden. It was a special place for the spectators between a show to another, but it became a gladiator's barracks. It was like a gymnasium for the gladiators, but just for training, because the school of the gladiators was not here in Pompeii, but in Capua, a city about 40 kilometers from here. So they spent here just a few days before the performances in the amphitheater. It's like the Colosseum in Rome, where the gladiators fight it. But the amphitheater that the archaeologists found in Pompeii is older than the Colosseum in Rome because this oh. one was built in the first century before Christ and the other one in Rome in the first century after Christ. So if you look all around, you see some rooms with the modern wooden doors where the archaeologists found a lot of shoes, clothes or the helmets of the gladiators, I mean the remains of the gladiators that now are in the museums everywhere. And just all around was a colonnade with the roof. Eh? Uh, as you can see, it's modern, it was completely rebuilt, you know, all the roofs, all the ceilings collapsed during the eruption, were damaged by ash, that's why today we can see just the ground floors, but all the columns that you see are original, they built the columns with the bricks, so you made the red stones inside, and then they put the bricks with the stucco, or marble. Here you see original stucco, it's like a plaster. Look at the walls now, they built the walls with a different kind of rocks, I mean bricks, volcanic stones or tufa rocks, and then they covered the walls with the beautiful frescoes, paintings or stucco decorations. The frescoes here were damaged during the eruption, I'll show you some original frescoes today, but you know more frescoes now are in the National Archaeological Museum in Napoli, it's the best museum that we have in the area. Now, look at up there, just in the middle of the wall, you see some holes. They are the signs of the beams, so you must imagine another floor with the more gladiators' rooms. And if you look up there, over there, you see a wooden floor, uh, but it's new, eh? it was rebuilt. So imagine a floor like a balcony, a terrace with the more gladiators' rooms. Okay, so now we go to the theater. Andiamo, this way. Okay, so now, ladies and gentlemen, look at over there. Eh? Just uh, in front of you over there, you see an arch, a gallery. So one of the seven gates of Pompeii, Stabia Gate, you know, the city of Pompeii in Roman time, had seven gates, seven doors all around the world. The main gate is a Porta Marina, the sea gate, because it was in front of the sea. Here you see the famous Stabia Road, the Via Stabiana, and you are walking on the original lava stones. They were made with a typical lava rock, but the name is Basalt. Basalt huh? So, on the road you see many shops, beautiful houses and small hotels. And if you look in the middle of the road today, everywhere you see the typical three-dimensional stones. They are a kind of pedestrian crossing, stepping stones. They were invented to pile in up. Why? Because here in Roman time, there wasn't a sewerage system, so people threw the rubbish, I mean the yellow and brown from the houses on the streets. Oh. The water of the public and sometimes through the streets. Oh. But you must imagine that one full of mud, water, or the excrements of the animals. So they invented the three-dimensional stones like a small bridge to cross from a sidewalk to another, to go from a shop to another, walk on the streets of the city but they walked on the sidewalks they were to the right and to the left but if you look between the stones you see the spaces with the original tracks of the wagons oh, wheels sorry. yeah so it was one of the most famous roads so imagine a cart wagons with small horses or small donkeys you know the wooden wheels were covered by iron metal that's why we see the trucks on the roads today everywhere okay so now we see the shop number eight i think i'll keep recording it's a hot to warm so it was like a fast food where people sold all the foods and drinks the mcdonald of 79 80 <laughs> So you see the counter with original marble, with original amphoras inside the jars. They put the typical red hot wine, they produce the local wine, and they mix hot wine with honey or cinnamon, like sangria. They have different kind of food like today. 
also meat, the fish, the vegetables, the cereals, the fruits. But they had also a speciality called garum. It was like a fish sauce, very spicy and salty. You must imagine a three stories, you know, they collapse it behind the store, just behind the wall in front of us there, there was an house. The owner of the store was the same of the house, the store and the house. But usually you can find all the stores on the streets and the houses behind. And in the night the store was closed by a wooden sliding door. And the Thermopolium was a famous shop. You know, when the archaeologists excavated here, they found about 90, nine zero fast food all around the city. So today you see McDonald's everywhere, mm -hmm. huh? in every corner. <laughs> okay, so now number two, we have another fast food, huh? McDonald's, another one. Huh? Now, look at the roads. You know, Pompeii, Roman time, 2000 years ago, was a modern city. It was like Manhattan today. So they had the main roads uh, called the Decumani, and uh, to the right and to the left, uh, you see the secondary small roads, Cardini, east, west, north, south. If you look on the walls of the city everywhere, you see some marble descriptions. Uh, they are modern, they were made by the archaeologists because when they excavated the city, they divided the Pompeii into different blocks and they put also some numbers outside the shops and the houses, so it's like a modern map. Huh? So now, come this way, a look at the shop number three. As you can see, it's another fast food. Huh? I remember 90 McDonald's. So you see the marble counter, the amphoras inside, and you see also the door to go inside. The house was just behind the shop. Remember, all the shops were closed by a wooden sliding door. So when you see a large entrance, and the track over the door, it's a shop, okay? When the entrance is smaller and taller than the main entrance of a shop, it's an house. For example, number three, we have a shop. Number four, it's another shop. Number five, we have the entrance of a famous house. And we can go there, we can see the difference. Yeah. As you can see, it's closed. This house is closed because it's under restoration. But we visit an house, so we go inside a famous house in the tour. But if you look outside, you see a marble inscription in Latin. You know, they spoke the Latin language. Domus means house. Okay, rich house. Huh? And Pupidi Secundi Augustiani was the name and the surname of the owner's house. But this description that you see is not original. It was made by the archaeologists. They found inside an original small description spoke about the name of the owner's house. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here you see a large entrance and the track over the door. So you can imagine it was it was a another shop. It was a famous big bakery. Huh? You see the oven in front of you. The archaeologists found some pieces of carbonized bread inside oh, and they wow. produced a different kind of bread in Roman time. For example, bread with the cereals or with the red wine and honey. And uh, just behind the oven, you see behind the wall the remains of some original millstones. They were rounded by the donkeys or the horses, so they made the flour from the grain, the cereals. You know, the richer people receive the bread directly at home in the morning, while the ordinary people but eat in the bakeries. And the archaeologists found about 45 bakeries here wow. in Pompeii. So remember, 90 fast food, 45 bakeries for 20,000 inhabitants. So now, there you see more stepping stones. They are everywhere. And uh, you see more tracks of the wagon to wheels on the road. I told you, Stabia Road was very famous. So you see different shops and many houses, but it's not the main road. So in a few minutes, I'll show you the Fifth Avenue of Pompeii, the main <laughs> road. The name is Via dell'Abbondanza. Okay, so we can use the stepping stones to reach the main road like 2000 years ago. And yeah. So now, Look at the famous main road, Via dell'Abbundanza, abandoned road. So when the archaeologists excavated the city, they found on the road over there an original public 
Fantine, with the face of the abundance goddess. She was the goddess of good luck with the cornucopia, do you know the horn yes. of a plenty? Yes. With a lot of things inside the symbol of good luck, like coins or fruits. I mean that the archeologists invented the name of the main road after the excavations. So we don't know the real name. Put some mattresses on the stone beds, and they used to eat lying down and not sitting down on the beds. You know, the richest people in Roman time used to eat lying down on the beds and to the food with the ends, with the fingers, because they had just one meal a day, the dinner. So the dinner time was a moment of relax for them. It lasted about four hours huh? with the music, songs, dances. You know, inside the house, about three families lived of the same generation. So if you go inside the house, you see more bedrooms, more more dining rooms because more families live inside you know more families means more adults and more children okay you know Pompeii was a rich city it was close to the sea so it was a trade center they made here many local products like olive oil red wine or fish sauce they sold them inside the shops that were everywhere but they exported them in the other cities of the Mediterranean area when the archaeologists excavated here, they found many lead water pipes. And you know, the lead was poisonous, it yes. caused the general diseases like yes. mental problems or yes. infertility. But they did know, so the life expectancy in Roman time was about 45, maximum of 50 years. So they died because of lead and also because of the pre-hygienic conditions of the city. So it was a good life, but short. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we see a beautiful building on the main road, the spa, the bathhouse, the beauty center. Eh? Andiamo. <laughs> Okay, so now, ladies and gentlemen, we are outside of the public baths. Uh, they had the two sections. Over there, we have the women's section, and in front of us there, there is the entrance to the men's section. Today, I'll show you the men's section, because it's better preserved. Here, you see a big space, like a garden. It was the gymnasium. It was an open area, no roof, like today. But if you look at there, you see the remains of the colonnades. The roof is modern, the columns are original, and on the walls there you see the remains of the original frescoes, paintings with the red color. They used the different colors, but the symbol of Pompeii was the color of the umbrella, red, dark red. We don't know why, but we know that they took red probably from the minerals or the pigments of the flowers. I mean, they built the walls with the different rocks. Then they covered the rocks with the plaster. When it was still wet, they put the colors. That's why the name of the painting in Roman time was frescoes, which means fresh, okay? So if you look on this side now, you see two buildings. One is in front of us, another one is to the right over there. They were to change in the rooms. And look at on the wall, you see a beautiful original yeah. stucco decoration. It's about 2,000 years old with the red color. Up at the arch, the big arch, inside the rectangle, you see Jupiter, Zeus. Huh? Mm -hmm. And if you look at just between the buildings, so you see a space, a rectangle, the remains of the swimming pool. Oh. Huh? So outside they had the gymnasium, to changing rooms yeah. and the pool. Mm -hmm. So now, in a few minutes, I'll show you the main section. I will explain. Oh, Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we are inside one of the changing rooms of the spa and inside the case you see one of the famous plaster casts, a body of a victim of the eruption. Oh. The plaster casts were invented by Giuseppe Fiorelli, a famous Italian archaeologist. You know, Pompeii was covered by ash, okay? <coughs> Imagine the skeleton was under the ash. So Fiorelli made some holes in the ash. The ash was a compact, but it was a soft material. And he put some liquid plaster in the empty cavities of the body after the decomposition. The liquid plaster covered the skeleton and the empty cavities of the body. In few days, it became very hard. So he obtained the shape of the body at the moment of the death. So inside the plaster that you see today, that is the original skeleton of the victim. I mean, the real bones are still inside the plaster today. The archaeologists have found about 2,000 skeletons all around the city. They made about 100 plaster casts. 
some of them are here in Pompeii. More bodies, you know, are in the museums, exhibitions everywhere. The skeleton was found not here. Eh? It was found inside the famous house of the archaeological area. I mean that the archaeologists made the plaster casts, then they removed them from the ash and they put them in the most important buildings of the archaeological area so all the tourists can see them. He was a slave. Look at the shape of the belt. It was a typical belt of the slaves. And look at the position. He died for suffocation. He protected this mm -hmm. face with the arm from the ash and gases. Okay. So you see also the shape of the clothes <coughs> are here. Okay. So as you can see, people in Roman time weren't very tall. They were short, huh? like me, more or less. <laughs> and the archaeologists said they was young, about 19, 20 years old. Okay. So, um, minutes we go inside ladies and gentlemen and you see a beautiful original ceiling one of the few ceilings that didn't collapse during the eruption so mm. you see a beautiful decoration the marble floor and all the red paintings that you see on the walls of the frescoes are original so ladies and gentlemen in front of you there is the first ephemeral room the frigidarium you know fridge you yes. cold room you see the pool inside, and the cold water, but it was not cold, it was a fresh natural water coming from the aqueduct. You see many niches on the wall, imagine the small marble statues inside, but they were destroyed at the moment of the eruption. You see beautiful colors on the walls, like red and blue, symbol of the water and of the sea. And if you look at the ceiling, you see an imitation of a blue sky with the stars, okay? So look at inside. So now we are in the Apoditerium. It was the changing room. Ah, Apoditerium was the Latin name of the room. Uh, look at the benches and on the walls you see the lockers where they put their clothes. <laughs> So up there you see a part of the beautiful decoration with the flowers and cupids, not angels. Because Pompeii wasn't a Christian city in Roman time, it was a pagan city with a pagan religion. So imagine a different gods, not churches. But so we go to the steam room now. Room, and now we are in the like a sauna okay in front of us there is the pool and a small pool of a tepid water warm water inside but now look at the double floor the mm -hmm. eating system you see the first floor there and the wooden floor here completely rebuilt imagine a marble floor between the floors you see some brick pillars called the suspensure because they suspended the floor where you are walking on now between the floors and between the pillars in the spaces hot hair passed coming from a special fireplace you know like an oven with a corner under the floor that heated the all the floor and all the room like a sauna but now look at on the walls so for example to the left in the lower part you see also the remnants of the double wall between the walls was an empty space where hot hair passed coming from the same oven under the floor that heated all the walls and all the room like a sauna, very, very hot. Up there we have the remains of uh, more original decorations, you know, all the walls were covered by white stucco decorations, you see more decorations up there. And now, only we see the last one. So now we are in the Calidarium hot room. Huh? So you see the pool of hot water inside. The same system, 
double floor. You see the brick pillars. And if you look inside the pool to the right in the lower part, in the corner, you see the remains of the double wall. So same system, okay? We have three niches on the wall. Imagine the small marble statues inside that were destroyed. Look at that now. The other side, we have a small tub, the lab room. It was like a fountain with a cold water inside to refresh themselves, okay? As you can see, the ceiling in the rooms here are modern. They were completely rebuilt. The original one collapsed. Why? In the rooms over there, you saw the original ceiling. I told you, the ceiling at there during the earthquake of 62 after Christ was damaged, and it was rebuilt with a different material, so, so it was stronger than this one at the moment of the eruption, and it didn't collapse. I mean, there, the archaeologists found the original ceiling, but they didn't find ash inside. Mm. Here, they didn't find the ceiling, but they found the ash and all the pyroclastic materials inside, so mm. they removed the ash. Mm -hmm. Remember, Pompeii was covered up by seven meters of ash. I told mm. you, 21 feet, more or less, but not from the ground where you're working now, but seven meters above the buildings on the mm. top. That's mm. why when the city was discovered, it was like a big mountain of ash. So, mm. you know, the excavations here lasted three centuries, but just mm. because of Pompeii was big, but they were easy. The ash was soft. Mm -hmm. huh? So in 300 years, the archaeologists removed all the ash, and you know they reused the ash to build a modern city or mm -hmm. modern roads. Okay? Oh. So we. Now, we are in the red light district. Oh, yeah. The archaeologists <laughs> found 25 brothels here in Pompeii. Imagine that Rome had about 1 million of inhabitants and just 15 brothels. Pompeii, 20,000 people and 25 brothels. <laughs> <laughs> so the prostitution was illegal. It was like a job, a business, and the prostitutes were slaves. You know, the name of the brothel in Roman time was Lupanare. Lupanare. Eh? See, the word lupa in Latin means she-wolf. Why? The sound of the prostitutes at the moment of the performance was compared to the sound of the she-wolf. Huh? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> they named the brothel Lupanare at the house of the she-wolves. And today I'll show you a famous brothel just at the end of the road over there. Huh? The only one with the two stories. To floor, the archaeologists found the five rooms. Inside the rooms, they found a small stone bed. And you know, outside the rooms, on the walls, they found uh, some frescoes, uh, paintings with erotic positions, uh, the specialities of the prostitutes. So people choose the favorite prostitutes and the favorite position. Imagine it was like a menu, okay? <laughs> 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 if you look on the wall here, you see uh, the remains of an original red painting with a representation of two snakes. And you know, the snake in Roman time was a symbol of good luck. Okay? Lupanare. See, the lupanare, the grotto, easier. Okay? The second floor is completely rebuilt, so you see modern rocks, imagine the more fine bedrooms up there. In front of the brothel was another famous building, look at the marble inscription on the wall, Hospitium City. It doesn't mean hospital, but hospitality, so it was like a bed and breakfast, fast food, McDonald's on the ground floor, and small hotel upstairs. So I think that they had a good idea, no? But the breakfast just in front of the brothel, probably spend the weekends. <laughs> huh? So, ladies and gentlemen, in a few minutes we go inside and you see the original frescoes, the erotic positions. It's like a Kama Sutra book. Huh? You see also the picture of a Priapo, the god of the human fertility. Behind the wall you see a small toilet, the latrina, and inside the rooms on the walls you see also some original graffiti. They are the comments of the sailors or the merchants about the performances of the prostitutes, a kind of a trip advisor of 79 AD, the reviews. So you know when the archaeologists found the graffiti, they found also the names of the prostitutes and they discovered there were no local names. So maybe the prostitutes came from Africa or other cities of the Mediterranean area, the same the customers, they were not the cities and so Pompeii, you know, but the sailors or the merchants, they came here every day, okay? We go inside now, please don't use a flash. So now, 
Ladies and gentlemen, look at on the wall. You see some graffiti. Okay. You can see the name of a prostitute, Libanis. Okay. The verb, Fellat. And the price. I mean, I can try to translate. Libanis work for few coins. Okay. Huh? Do you understand? <laughs> so, if you look on the wall here, you see a phallic symbol, a penis. Huh? It was a sex symbol, of course, we are in the red light district, but it was also the symbol of fertility, prosperity, and good luck in Roman time. In this case, it was a sign, an arrow, indicating the direction of a small brothel that the archaeologists have found over there. You know, it was the red light district, so the archaeologists have found the different brothels, and it was like a Google map. So follow the sign to reach the brothel. Huh? <laughs> okay, so look at all the brothels. Be careful. Big phallic symbol, big penis. Huh? So it was, uh, you know, there that is the square. So every day many people came here, sailors, merchants, they didn't know the way to the brothel. So on the main road, on the ground, was a phallic symbol to indi indicate the direction. Eh? Mm -hmm. So go this way, go to the left. <laughs> the red light district is over there, okay? Eh? So the GPS. Goddess, she was the goddess of good luck. You see the cornucopia, the yes. horn of a plenty. So the archaeologists found the beautiful fountain and then they invented the name of the main road, the abundance road from the abundance goddess. You know, all the public fountains that you see all around the city were made of volcanic stones. It's the only one on limestone, that's why it's white and not black. If you look at the stone, you see and the cavities here and to the other side. I mean, imagine 2,000 years ago, here, the hands, and, and the same, the other sides. Okay? Well, huh? so that's why you see that. Huh? Oh, okay. black and white mosaic floor with a representation of a wild boar between two dogs. So the name of the house today is the house of the wild boar, okay? So you see the atrium, the garden over there, and even the sidewalk outside the house was covered by a beautiful white mosaic floor. We don't know the name of the owner's house. It was a, probably a merchant who lived on the main road and just nearby the main square and the main gate. You know, it was a famous part of the city. And now we are at the end of the main road. Look at over there, just at the end of the road, you see three white stones. It was a stop for the carts, the wagons. You know, the main square, like the modern square, was a pedestrian area, okay? We are going to the square now. We are in the Forum Square, the most important part of the city. The volcano, the Mount of Vesuvius is there, the best view, so you can take a beautiful pictures. Now we are in the most important part of the of the city of Pompeii. And all the square, you know, was covered by marble floor. And you see the remains of the original marble. 
everywhere, no roof in the square. It was an open area, but if you look to the left and to the right, uh, especially to the left, you see the remains of the double colonnade. So imagine a double floor with the roof there and also to the other side, a collapse it. The most important building is in front of us. It's the Jupiter Temple, dedicated to Jupiter, you know, Zeus, the father of all gods, the protector of the city. It was a probably in vacation. <laughs> <laughs> there we have the basilica. And today the word the basilica in Italian means church. But in Roman time it was the court, the palace of justice. Behind the colonnade there we have the oldest temple in Pompeii dedicated to Apollo, the god of the sun. Look at over there now, to the left you see a building with a roof. It was the granaries, a place where people sold the grain, the cereals, but today it's like a small museum, a deposit, where you see some original artifacts that were found here in Pompeii. Look at to the right now over there, you see a building with the arches. It was the Macellum, the fish and the meat market, the supermarket. The bronze statue there is modern. It's a part of a modern exhibition of a Polish artist, Igor Mitorai. It was a temporary exhibition. I mean, there were about 70 statues here for about 16 months. Then the archaeologists removed the statues. Now they are inside the museum in Tuscany, nearby Florence. And here we have just two modern statues. One is here, another one is by the entrance of Porta Marina. You know, all the original... See, si, see, si, Daedalus. You know, all the original marble and the bronze statues that were found here in Pompeii during the excavations now are in the museum in Napoli to preserve them. Because, you know, Pompeii is a museum, of course, but it's open, okay? So now, ladies and gentlemen, in a few minutes we reach a famous house of the archaeological area. I mean, you can go inside, so you see all the rooms and beautiful original mosaics. Then we'll come back here in the square and we see the museum over there, okay? Mm -hmm. Follow me this way now, thank you. Andiamo. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is the granaries in Roman time, a place where people sold the cereals. But today, as you can see, it's like a small deposit a museum where you see some original artifacts that were found here. You see many, many amphoras. Inside the jars they put olive oil, red wine, fish sauce. Inside the case we have the one of the plaster casts. Uh, it was a slave. Huh? Do you remember the shape of the belt? Yes. Huh? And uh, inside the plaster, you know, there are the original bones. To the left, we have the remains of some Corinthian columns with the beautiful capitals. We see the next one now. No, the wood is modern. It's the reconstruction of a wooden cart, because all the wood uh, that you see today in Pompeii is modern, but the iron, the metal that you see around the wheels is original. Eh? So the wheels were covered by metal, that's why we see the tracks on the roads everywhere today. You see also uh, the remains of some uh, original marble tables and marble fountains inside. Now we see the next one. Oh, look at the inside the case, we have the famous plaster cast of the dog. Right. Look at the position, he died for suffocation, and look at also the shape of the collar. It was tied to a chain, so you see the collar. Okay? So you see some original marble tables and uh, original bronze fireplaces, the braziers on the ground. So we see the next one now. The dog was a chain around his neck. Cast of a boy, a citizen of Pompeii, but look at the position with his hands near his nose to protect himself from mass and gases. Okay, so you see some original marble fountains with the modern coins inside. You know, the tourists 
put the coins inside, like a symbol of good luck, you know, like Trivi Fantine in Rome. Huh? Can you see the next one? Okay, so we have the plaster cast of a boy inside, uh, of a baby, sorry, inside the case. It was about 40 years old. Huh? And uh, inside the plaster there are the original bonds, you see also the shape of the clothes, you see more original marble fountains, more columns over there, and for us everywhere. We see the next one. An original marble statue. She was a famous empress, Livia. She was the wife of the famous Roman Emperor Augustus. So now we see the last one. Now inside the room here you see two original marble tables and an original bronze safety box for jewels or coins. So the archaeologists found some jewels and bronze, silver and golden coins inside the box. They now are in the jewel and the coin collection of the museum in Napoli. You know the name of the coins in Roman time? The Sesterzi. Si, Sesterzi. And another one? What's one? Assi. Eh? Assi, denari, Sesterzi. Bronze, silver and golden coins. Okay? So all the artifacts that you see inside the rooms are original. Eh? They are 2,000 years old. Uh, they were found not inside the rooms, but uh, in the city everywhere. I mean, in the shops, in the houses, on the roads. And then the archaeologists put them inside the room, so all the tourists can see them. Huh? The oldest temple in Pompeii dedicated to Apollo, the god of the sun. There you see the remains of the original marble altar, for the sacrifices of the animals. Then we have the steps, the colonnade, and up there, where you see the roof, that is the cell of the god, where the archaeologists found the original marble statue of Apollo. But you know, inside it, the archaeologists found also two bronze statues. Apollo is here, the god of the sun. And in front of Apollo there, we have Diana. She was the moon goddess, Apollo's sister, yes. They are two copies, eh? the original statues are in Napoli in the museum. The marble column that you see there, the white column there, is an original sundial, okay? No roof in the garden there, but all the columns that you see supported the roof for the collapse. In front of us, the gallery is the main gate, Porta Marina. It was the main entrance in Pompeii. So it was a famous road. You see the original lava stones, the basalto. But if you look between the big stones, you see a lot of small, white marble stones everywhere. Why? The reflection of the moonlight on the white marble stones helped the inhabitants in the night. So they were street lights, reflectors, cat's eyes. Okay. Another information for you, ladies and gentlemen, if you look on the sidewalks of the city everywhere, you see some holes. They were the horses or donkeys parking. Huh? Ah. In front of us there are the remains of a famous temple dedicated to Venus. She was the beauty and the love goddess. It was the biggest temple here. But today you see just the remains. For example, some marble pieces, the remains of the original floor, two columns, another one is there. Look at the beautiful Corinthian capital. So the temple was damaged by the earthquake of 62 after Christ and in 79 AD it wasn't completely rebuilt. I mean, many buildings at the moment of the eruption were under reconstruction. You know, on the coast over there, there are the other cities that were destroyed by the same eruption. So do you know the city of Ircolano? Yes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was destroyed by the lava, okay, because it was uh, much closer to the crater, okay. So Pompeii was destroyed by pyroclastic materials and ash because it was about uh, 10 kilometers uh, far from the crater, Ercolano just uh, 5 kilometers. Uh, so there people died immediately because of lava, while here the eruption lasted the three days. So imagine two moments. First moment, rocks and pyroclastic <coughs> materials secured the city. Second moment, Pompeii was completely covered by ash, so people died of first suffocation. In Ercolano, the excavations weren't easy because the lava became very hard, like a tufa rock, and the archaeologists made some tunnels, galleries, and they excavated the city. Well, you know, I told you, the excavations were easy because the ash was soft. The archaeological area of Ercolano is 
smaller than Pompeii today because there the modern city was built on the top of a part of the old city. So there the archaeologists didn't find the square and all the public buildings. They are under the modern city. I mean, Ercolano is smaller than Pompeii, but you know, it's better preserved than Pompeii. I mean, if you go there, you see the first and the second floors of some buildings. You see some original carbonized wooden things because under the lava, without the oxygen, all the wooden things were better preserved than Pompeii. So you see more frescoes and more mosaics, okay? So another information for you, ladies and gentlemen, when the city of Pompeii was discovered, you know, it was like a big mountain of ash. So we have two important documents about the eruption of the volcano. Do you know the letters of Pliny the Younger? Eh? Mm -hmm. Two important letters. Thank to the, thanks to the letters, we know the month, the day, and the year of the eruption. I mean, the people knew there was a city of Pompeii in the area, but they did know the position where was the city. At the end of the 16th century, a famous Italian architect excavated an aqueduct here just to take some water. He found some pieces of marble. It was the marble of the old city of Pompeii. So the archaeologists discovered that Pompeii was here and they started the excavations. But remember that the excavations started a few centuries later, in 1748, thanks to the king of Napoli, Charles III of Bourbon, Carlo III di Borbone. They lasted about three centuries. So you know, many, many archaeologists are still working here now, today. Okay, so now, ladies and gentlemen, our tour is over. So grazie mille. Thank Grazie. you. Grazie. Grazie. If you want to stay longer inside, you know, you can visit the amphitheater. You have just to come back to the main road via dell'abbondanza. You have to walk on the road for 15 minutes, no five zero, but one five minutes. When you are at the end of the road, you have to go right and then left. There you find the next not the train station. So if you need the train station, you have to come back this way. If you need the exit now, now, you have to go that way, down the stairs and right. So you find the main entrance, the train station, in the same place where we started the tour. Okay? Were you happy with your guides? Yes? yes? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a nice day. Grazie Thank you. mille. Thank Grazie. you. Grazie.